My next guest is a highly trained licensed clinical psychologist who specializes in therapeutic treatment of individuals and couples. She helps clients find solutions to repeated problems or patterns, build self-esteem, and make better decisions in relationships. Please welcome Dr. Ayana Abrams. Dr. Ayana Abrams, welcome to In Contact. Thank you for having me, Robin. You're welcome. So tell me a little bit about your background. Yes. Um, so I am a licensed clinical psychologist in the state of Georgia. I am a private practice owner. My practice name is Ascension Behavioral Health, um, and I'm based right in Decatur near Emory University. In my, in my solo practice, um, I serve mental health populations. So I work with individuals and couples who are struggling with anxiety, depression, day-to-day -day stressors, suicidality, um, and a lot of relationship issues. So Time Magazine uh, statistics report that 28% of suicide rates have increased over the past couple of decades. In your professional opinion, can you speak to why depression and suicide is on the rise? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely something that I view as more of a public health issue versus a mental health issue. And there's no one reason or there's no one factor um, that increases suicide rates. Um, but what we've noticed over time clinically and in our research populations is that um, things like financial distress, hmm. um, any job related stressors, relationship stressors, and trauma um, are really, really big factors in somebody contemplating, in somebody attempting, or in somebody completing suicide. What are some signs of, super, uh, of, of suicide and depression? I know you kind of led into some, but can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit more? Mm -hmm. Right. So when we're thinking about depressive symptoms, um, I always tell people that de your, your depressive symptoms are unique to you. Right? Symptoms that might show up for you are very different or could be very different than someone else. Um, so some things we're looking at is just kind of changes in your behavior. Um, so some people might eat more or some people might eat less. Um, some people might sleep more. They are avoiding contact with the world. They feel so fatigued by all the stresses in their life that they just want to stay in bed. Um, one of the big markers is social isolation. When you see that people are just not their active selves the way that they used to be at some point, um, they're pulling away from family, friends, they're not texting back, they're not on social media. Um, those are some markers of depression, um, as well as just not enjoying things anymore. Hobbies that they used to love doing, it just doesn't bring them the same joy. So is depression hereditary maybe? It absolutely can be. Um, there are biological factors and environmental factors um, that <clears throat> contribute to somebody feeling either mildly, moderately, or very severely depressed. Um, so what we, what we notice in the research, and again in, in clinical samples, is that if there's a parent who has a history of depression or any mental health issue, um, there is an increased likelihood that a child in the family or that the children in the family might have some mental health issues. Um, it's not equated. It's not a, a direct um, correlation, but rates are um, connected in that way, so there is something biological. So why, do, why does the black community have a stigma mm -hmm. around mental health? Can you talk a little yeah. bit about that in some areas that we can really grow, um, grow in that area? Yeah, and, and, and in general, there's a huge stigma, right, related to mental health. People are much more um, inclined to pay attention to physical health symptoms, but mm -hmm. with mental health, because you can't see them, people don't know what to do with them. Um, and particularly to, the, particular to the black community, when we look at just the history of our health sy systems and medical care, um, things were seen as a white people's disease, right? If things were seen as, you know, not affecting us. Um, so it really gets in the way of people being, being able to have conversations. Um, there's a lot of stigma around mental health where it's viewed as crazy. Um, it's viewed as weakness, right? So people don't want to talk about that because other people perceive them um, as though they can't take care of themselves versus providing a lot of compassion for them. Uh, so particularly to the black community when it relates to that kind of stigma as well as um, sometimes religion can also get in the way. Oftentimes the black community will go to church and keep things in the family. We don't talk about these things that we can't control or that we don't understand so we bring it there versus bringing it to a mental health professional. What about being functionally depressed? Mm. Can you talk about mm -hmm. that and why we as an African American community operate in that space? Mm -hmm. Functioning depression is real. Again, uh, the stigma also um, reviews or kind of perceives depression as sadness, can't get out of bed, those things in, in terms of very, very severe depression. But many people are depressed and you would never know it. Many people are taking antidepressants and you would never know it. They are functioning, they are going to work, um, they're faking it. Right, they put a smile on their face, particularly when it comes to social media. You see all you know the headlines and the highlight reels of people's lives, all the while they're really, really struggling behind the scenes. 
that's what it is, right? So people aren't being honest with what's going on because one, they're scared, mm -hmm. they don't know what to do, and two, they're worried about being perceived negatively and that people trusting them less or um, just uh, discrediting them in so their lives. Can you talk a little bit more about that social media piece? Mm -hmm. I mean, people it's really huge. mask it and you know, we assume that everybody's living their best life mm -hmm. on social media, but yeah. that really can be a a cry a for facade. help as well. Absolutely. The, the ways in which we have seen people use social media um, is to pretend, right? It's to pretend, it's to fake it, to make it seem as though they're doing well. Um, it's very idealistic in these ways. It's filtered, right? So all these things that come up that really don't allow you to see what somebody is actually experiencing. So that when somebody is vulnerable, it's like, oh my goodness, you're in crisis versus, well, no, I'm just sad today. Mm -hmm. Something really bad happened. Mm -hmm. I'm upset with a coworker, right? Those conversations seem like they're not allowed. Oftentimes we want positive vibes only. Um, and that's something I was just like, no, we just want what the real vibes are, right? Because the human condition has a wide range and people aren't allowing themselves to experience that wide range of emotion. So, you know, in, in the media these days, we've mm -hmm. seen a lot of celebrities and well-known people, mm -hmm. you know, committing suicide. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to us about, you know, that facade, like yeah. you were just speaking about, a lot of famous people, not a lot, but a few famous mm -hmm. people have, have taken their own lives that seem to be wealthy mm -hmm. and doing really, really well. Can you talk to us about that stigma as well? I think that there's a stigma associated with success that, hey, if you have money, if you have fame, if you are quote unquote married and you look happy, a lot of the questions that surrounded um, some of the more recent celebrity deaths were, well, what did they have to be upset about? Why would they complete suicide, right? We saw them doing this and she's got a line of bags, she's got all these things, um, but those things don't have anything to do with mental health conditions, right? I always say that mental health issues don't discriminate in any way. They don't discriminate across race, gender, age, none of those things matter. Um, so oftentimes people think that mental health issues or kind of mental health illness is completely preventable. Um, and it's not, right? Again, because of the biology as, as well as the environmental factors, sometimes you have an illness and it really has nothing to do with you or something that has happened to you in your life, right? But it is your responsibility to learn how to manage it and to take so the best care of yourself. What are some techniques mm -hmm. that we can um, share with our audience yeah. about depression? Yeah, right, some ways, some things to look for, again, some of those symptoms that I mentioned before, really being attuned with your body, noticing when things feel off and not waiting too long. Oftentimes depression also increases because people don't take care of things immediately, right? You can be clinically diagnosed with depression in two weeks, right, and oftentimes people wait months and years and then come in and say, oh, well, I felt this way for five years versus when I first started noticing this, I started to do something about it. Um, so you really wanna take immediate care. Um, you wanna keep a good support system around you. Um, you want to have people who you love and people who you trust and who you can, who you can be honest with. Physical exercise um, is huge. Um, so physical exercise, hydration, just with very biological basics, sleep. Sleep is a major, major factor in just your body regulating itself. And we are a society and a world who does not sleep enough. On average, I think people are getting four to six hours of sleep a night, and we're supposed to get eight to nine hours of sleep, right? So you're literally killing yourself by not sleeping well. Um, and again, kind of engaging in activities that really make you happy, but also disengaging from things that don't make you happy. Leaving those relationships, right, that are, that are poor and dysfunctional. Setting boundaries with people so that you're not overwhelmed uh, by things like that. Those are all things that you can do in the here and now to take care of yourself. Dr. Abrams, you have been a fantastic guest. How can we reach out to you and learn more about your practice and you? Yes, so I am across several um, social media platforms. You can find me on Instagram at Dr. underscore Ayana underscore A. That's D-R underscore A-Y-A-N-N-A -N -N -A underscore A. Um, I'm on Facebook. I have a business page at Ascension Behavioral Health. Um, and my website is www.drabramsabh.com. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. There are a lot of simple things you can do to improve the efficiency of your place. Georgia Power can help with energy saving tips on everything from controlling airflow to lighting and more. We are committed to helping you make your home more energy efficient. Find tools and resources to help you save money and energy at georgiapower.com save.